Good morning, and thank you, everyone. I look forward to this presentation. It's uh, based on a project that I've been working on with several um, people, and uh, Julia Lane and uh, John King from Now Davis and others. Uh, Jason Owen Smith is also part of the major database that this is based on. So this is certainly uh, joint work. And this particular paper is joint with Evgeny Klochkin um, at the American Institutes for Research. Now, I want to set the stage for what this is about. And this is about food safety, not food security, but the safety of the, our food. And it is about how does research and how does funded research influence or have an impact on the safety of our food. We go, we eat salads and fruit, and we never think about the amount of federal dollars that goes into the safety of our food supply, not just in the US, but globally. And that's what this project is about. Uh, this diagram shows you that safety is not just something you think about at a restaurant level, which is sort of the consumption level, but it goes all the way back to the farm. So it's farm to fork, and it's a continuous look, loop and looking at various aspects of where food safety occurs, and then again, how does the scientific enterprise influence food safety um, within our midst? Now, what are the issues? The issues are, as you can see on the screen, um, that food safety is critically important, not just in terms of health, but also in terms of economic impact. Also, agencies want to know what is the return on investment of our, of our, of our funds. When we are funding all the researchers in this room, um, the agencies want to know, well, what is the yield from that? So this isn't just about food safety, really, if you want to extrapolate to other areas. But this is one of the things that um, we found out is, is from talking to a number of people that agencies, academic institutions, I'm at a, a public institution. And of course, we have to show what is the impact for all of this research that we do. We need to tell that story effectively. We also found out that students need to know, well, where should I invest my time? What types of, of areas should we be working in? And so this methodology and this scope also allows us to begin to answer those questions. And obviously, for the purpose of this discussion, the audience here is interested in methodological advances, and that's one of the issues that we're trying to tackle as well. So as I said, the public funding organization, universities, students, and others are very much interested in this topic, and we are also interested in it from the uh, science taxonomy and classification of systems level. Why do I say that? I say that because when we started this process of looking at food safety, we tried to think about how could we go out and just, you know, what would we assemble in terms of fields and call it, this is a food safety taxonomy, this is a food safety area. And it's not that defined. It's not as though I can go to NAICS codes or something and look at food safety and then have a whole digest of all the areas that comprise food safety. So we really did have to build this bottom up. We had to build the data platform and the taxonomy for it in order to determine what food safety is and get a better classification of food safety. So as I said earlier, we want to know how to capture and delineate interdisciplinarity um, of the research and these communities. We want to understand the consistency and reliability of results from multiple databases that we're using in this project. We want to know how to identify food safety research and funding streams to answer the questions I mentioned earlier. And how well is food safety publication activity aligned with federal funding? So let me tell you this part of the story. Um, we thought initially that we could go into this process, set up a data taxonomy, and then follow through by looking and linking all the, the, the researchers to their publication outputs. That proved to be a difficult task. We actually were able to do that with employment and wages, so there's another part of this whole project where we, that linking did occur. But to link directly to papers was difficult, so what we decided to do instead was use this methodology, this mining methodology, to look at, well, what is being funded and how is that classified and what are those topics? 
and then look at publications and say, oh, well, what is published currently in this area? Now, that's a little bit of a problem. I'm sure that you've already figured out that there are lag structures that we need to consider. But basically, instead of trying to just sew it all together and link it straight through, in this particular case, we decided, let's look to see what, are there some similarities um, between the funding streams as well as the publication literature. So we use a blended approach, as I mentioned, um, search terms, wiki, wiki labeling, and also we're using some text mining approaches. I'm not gonna go through all of the details of how we went about that. That would take way more time than I have, and I actually wanna get to the outcomes and what we found, but I would refer you to a chapter in a book that's coming out, I'll show you at the end, where the details of how this is done um, is, is explained very well. But basically, we have three ways of doing things. We're looking at search terms and just ask, um, ask um, the uh, experts, you know, what are the terms we should use? And initially we had about 700 terms and we used some other methods and to reduce that um, to down to about 300 terms that we were using. So we can just go out and talk to experts and try to figure out what is food safety and organize it that way. Another way of doing it is an automated wiki labeling and, and using the mining of the text to, to talk about frequency and importance of these words and word strings. And that is the process that we used. But we didn't just go with that 100% because we thought, well, maybe there is something about these terms, again, that may be spurious and not 100% accurate because take it, this whole taxonomy build is what everything else is gonna be built upon. So it's very important for us to have this data taxonomy and classification scheme very tight. So we took what came out of the automated wiki labeling process and we distributed that within sandboxes in different universities across the US, again, to get some experts to look at what the terms are. But this time, it's not asking the experts what are the terms we should use and then using them. It's using an automated process, coming up with you know, sets of terms, and then having the, ex the experts vet, um, vet that. And that was one of the processes as well. And then topic modeling on top of that in order to try to one other way of trying to figure out what she would be using. So this is a diagram that basically shows very simply what all three processes were. And even if we got thousands of hits in each of these circles, in our own process, we decided to look at the, the concatenation of those or look at the, the intersection of those and use very few terms to be very careful with what we're saying we define as food safety. So hopefully you're following me. That it is about coming up with a taxonomy where we know um, it's, you can't pull it off the shelf, using a few different ways of doing this, and then trying to determine how conservatively we could define what food safety is. That's the process. So I will skip a lot of the detail slides. I have them in there in case I need to go back. And I want to transition to talking about what did we find. So we looked at funding streams from the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, and of course, the US Department of Agriculture. And we wanted to figure out if you look at the awards, titles and awards from these three agencies, using the, the algorithm that we had for developing that data taxonomy, what are they funding, right? That's one side of the equation, what are they funding? And as you can see for the National Science Foundation, they're funding biological science and technology focus food safety research. That is the primary thing within this whole funding stream on food safety that the National Science Foundation is doing. And what you see here are the top five topics. I mean, there's streams of topics, but what you see under here, which is way too much to even begin to digest, are the top five topics that you could see. So if we go to the National Institutes of Health, they are also funding research related to food safety. And their focus is um, bacteriology, biochemistry, and the medical aspects of food safety. So again, we're looking at titles and abstracts for funding agencies, and we're able to use this methodology to extract and say, well, here is what their focus is. For the USDA, we're looking at, fun yeah. 
uh, we're looking at research directly related to food science, food microbiology, and farm-to-table projects. So they're looking at the full stream, but as you'll see in a later slide, for the USDA, much of it is at the table side of things um, in terms of the research that they're funding. So that's one element, one thing that we're able to find out. We also take it and look at publications, so not just looking at grants, but looking at publications. We're looking at web of science and then a number of other areas, a number of other databases to try to see what is being published by whom and where. Um, we measure the bias for food safety publication coverage in web of science versus other academic institutions. So I want to just kind of go through this part of it a little quickly. Uh, what are some of the results? With the wiki label invalidation, we went down, we went from 130,000 documents or 131,000 documents to about 40,000 documents. And so that's how conservative this whole grooming process was. Um, we can see how many journal articles, books, book series, and also how many journals there are. And of course, one of the reasons that we're using this process is not just to look at English publications, but also publications in German, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. So again, kind of broadening out from what we typically do and typically see in some areas of bibliometrics where the focus is very much English, we're picking up other languages as well. Food safety authors, countries, the United States, and the people Republic of China, and there you could see that also one of the artifacts of this modeling was that on average about five authors per food safety journal um, between 2000 and 2015. So this is not the, the, the lab with 100 people, but it's also not individual or just two people working on this. Typically we have about five folks working on these projects. If you look at international food safety collaborations, you'll see the US researchers are on about a third of those. And so very important, and roughly 25% of web of science food safety papers involve cross-institutional collaboration. So again, we're able to use this data platform in mind to find these things out. Um, discipline distribution, you could see about a third of the web of science food safety articles are in food science technology, microbiology and biotechnology, sorry, um, biotechnology and applied, bio, and applied microbiology, I'm sorry. So you can see, again, back to looking at NSF, NIH, and USDA, uh, what are the areas that they're funding and, and where, how are you seeing this picked up, you know, the relationship, how is it picked up in the articles? Um, won't stop there, because I know I got two minutes left. Uh, <laughs> you haven't even shown me the thing. Uh, topical bias, um, about we're looking at, not just at Web of Science and other databases, we're looking at Web of Science um, and USDA to look at that relationship. And we see 48% of food safety publications were found in both Web of Science and other databases. So there's this overlap, but this also says that other databases are picking up food safety research that Web of Science is not. So this is one of the findings, too, of looking at this work. Too much to read, here's the bullet. Uh, while Web of Science covers most prestigious journals, uh, we also see publications are also relevant in the scientific landscape. So they're picking up the most scientifically uh, relevant um, research in food safety. But the second bullet is really important. Both data sets um, primarily focus on regulatory and risk topics. And so when you're looking at Web of Science and all those other databases I'm talking about, uh, regulatory and risk topics are the main um, topics that are looked at. Excuse me, I went too far. Um, when you're looking at Web of Science and what's funded by the USDA, you see that here are the outcomes that you need to look at. Risk management and pathogen detection are covered by both the USDA grants and Web of Science and Food Safety um, publications. So you see that nexus. We wanted to trace through. We weren't able to do that, but we can actually see that there's actually the similarity between the two in terms of funding and publications, in terms of risk management and path pathogen detection. Um, from looking at this, you can also see that USDA grants are focused more on consumer behavior and food safety growth in grocery stores 
the fork side rather than the farm side, but you don't see that as much in terms of the Web of Science publications. Um, the Web of Science publications cover several pathogens detection topics, and NSF and NIH are also shown, showing up here in terms of the value of their research on contribu contributions to research. The USDA is focused a bit more on waterborne pathogens, and that's not yet showing up in the publication stream. So that's what I meant about the delay. It's possible that in the future you may begin to see that in the publication stream, but we're not seeing that just yet. But we are seeing it in the funding sources. Again, um, one of the interesting results we felt we got in this project. So I just gave you a summary of all of these items here um, and things that we felt were interesting findings from developing this database. And where we're going from here, we need to improve the algorithm. We need to do more work on what NSF is funding and what NIH is funding, although this, fund, this project is funded in part by the USDA, so we did focus a bit on that. And obviously, food safety made sense to focus on the USDA, but we still have some more things that we'd like to do in terms of linking up between what USDA is funding, NIH, and NSF, and we have to look for more direct link. We'd love to be able to do that between the federal funding funding and laws. A lot of what we looked at were publications. We've looked at patents as well. We've looked a lot at human capital. That's the major part of this project that I'm not talking about today. But another question that comes up all the time, all this federal funding for research, how does it actually affect our laws, the acts that are passed? And we would love to be able to, to mine that as well. So thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to take your questions. This is the book that I mentioned. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, Julia Lane, John King, um, and Stan Johnson are co-editors. Um, Jason Owen Smith is in the room, and he's the one that's in charge of IRIS, the major database that a lot of this is flowing through. So thank you.